One of the most common questions I get asked about improving customer experience is how do we choose the right capabilities and technology for the business? There's quite a breadth of e-commerce systems, CMS, chatbots, all sorts of personalization technology. And how do we know what is right for the business in order to push the program to become about bringing the tangible, measurable impact and not about just updating the website? I wanted to share a four-step framework that will help you to define the right capabilities to build a roadmap and build a program. Welcome everyone, my name is Irina Ashdown. I'm a digital transformation consultant and the founder of Amplified AX. We deliver meaningful change and measurable business impact through successful digital transformations. We're independent and technology agnostic and currently on the mission of building a portfolio of showing the mm -hmm. impact on the business before the digital transformation and after. Before making a decision about purchasing any customer experience technology, it's important to understand what customer journeys are we actually looking to build. More often than not, I see organizations investing quite a lot into the latest and greatest technology in order to kind of account on any journeys, which may or may not be the right decision for a specific business. However, you're definitely running into the risk of over-investing in the technology and potentially not getting enough return, which is why I wanted to share this four-step framework, which will help you understand what the right journeys are, what are the capabilities you need, and then make sure that you choose the right technology. Let's get to it. Step one, know your customers. In order to understand who your customers really are, it's important to look deep into each customer segment. What we recommend doing is analyze and define what is called customer persona. Customer personas are a group of people that share the same traits like age, gender, profession, interests, motivation, pain points, and things like that. So it's really important to define who those customer personas are, because just like that within one customer segment, you can have completely different personas that would value completely different customer journeys. And it's really important to account for that. The way how you build that customer persona is from the data. So here it's really important not to make any assumptions and base everything on, on data so that we can eliminate any sort of bias towards who our customers are. The type of data that you would normally use is it could be, um, it actually varies from business to business, but it could be Google Analytics for sure, because you can get all sorts of demographic data from there. You can use service desk data where customers submit all sorts of surveys, complaints, and any sort of notes that you get from your support desk. Because Really, the support desk data is, is absolute goldmine. Also, if you have calls recording, call listening would also be a good way to understand who the customers are because you can hear exactly what they're asking and uh, you can understand what their needs are. So building a list of actual and up-to-date personas is the first step to define the scope for a customer experience program. Step two, define your customer journeys and here a moment. Now that you understand who your customers are, you can start thinking about the customer journeys that they would value and benefit from. Probably at this stage, you have quite a list of customer personas and really in most cases, building a tailored customer journeys for each persona is just simply not going to be viable because you will need to customize your technology quite a lot and it could be quite costly initiative to do. So what do you do in this case and how do you prioritize the personas? The answer is quite straightforward. The personas that bring you the most revenue are going to be the ones that you should be focusing on. Saying that, we definitely don't want to neglect other personas, but um, it just means that the remaining personas will probably have more of a generic journey rather than very much tailored customer journey. Another important concept to understand is to define what is called hero moments. So if you ever work with the digital agencies or marketing agencies, it's quite a common term. So hero moment is a moment in the customer journey, which works like a, like a tipping point for the customer, which is really make or break for the customer to decide whether to do business with your brand or not. Once we've defined and prioritized our customer personas, 
we need to think what is that hero moment for that customer? What can we do to delight them so much that they would definitely decide to do the business with us? There could be one or more hero moments in the journey. And these are the things that is definitely worth investing into and make sure you get it right because these are the things that will bring you the most return from your customer experience transformation. Another way to build customer journeys is simply to just look around and, and do a research to understand what your competition does and what customer journeys they have. Sometimes it's even good to look internationally and get some ideas and inspirations from other similar brands overseas. So step two, define customer journeys and hero moments for your customers to make sure that you delight them and get them to stay and do business with you. Step three, align your customer experience operations. Now that we know who our customers are, we've defined what customer experience and customer journey we want to deliver for them. We've defined the hero moment. Now it's time to look into our operations and understand what our people should do and how our internal processes should change. And also what's important is to look deeper into service design. This is where, in my opinion, current market is falling a little bit short because on one side, you've got a, a breadth of marketing agencies, which will help you to define the beautiful customer experience, but not necessarily will be able to advise you on your operational side and help you to implement maybe a CRM system, uh, something that will help you to improve your processes. And on the other side, you've got all sorts of technology implementers, which will help to improve things operationally, which will deploy the new website for you, but may not necessarily be able to push your customer experience to deliver the impact that it could have delivered. I wanted to make sure that at Amplify we do both. We are like a, a blend between the marketing agency and the system integrator because for us the whole experience starts with the digital journeys and goes all the way to the service design. In order to future-proof your investment and make sure that your customer experience transformation program delivers maximum output, it's really important to align your service design and processes as well. The reason being is because for the customers, the journey does not end after they have interacted with the website and received all sorts of automated emails. The customer experience continues all the way through when they're getting the actual service. So it's really important that that side is aligned as well. Otherwise, we're definitely missing the opportunity to bring the greater return just to give you an example, I recently worked on a project in the utility sector and the objective of the customer experience transformation program was to improve customer satisfaction. It was a really important metric for that sector because quite often the utilities are heavily regulated and, and honestly even penalized for having a poor customer experience. So in order to improve customer satisfaction, it was really important to not only improve the digital journeys, but also look into service design. Because really, in, in simple language, it doesn't matter how beautiful and streamlined the, the whole website journey is, how automated the emails are, if it takes them a few months to get the actual service. So customers will never be satisfied and happy with that experience. They will never give us a, a good customer satisfaction rate. So step three, make sure to align your customer experience, operations, your process, your people, along with service design to make sure that you're program delivers maximum return. Step four, build implementation roadmap. Now that we know who our customers are and we understand what customer journeys we're looking to build, we also understand what we need to change operationally and how to align our service design. This is the point where you've got a full list of capabilities and the process changes that we need to deliver for your customer experience program. At this stage, you can comfortably engage all sorts of technology vendors because you will have a prioritized list of all the features and capabilities that you need for your customer experience transformation program. And this is our four-step framework that help you to define the scope and capabilities that you need for your customer experience transformation program to get maximum return. If you need more information about customer experience transformation programs, you can find it on our website, AmplifyDX-Consulting.com. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if you need any formal or informal advice. 
I hope you found it useful. Thank you for listening and have a good day.